Thank you, Your Honor. Scott Cook on behalf of the defendant. Thank you. And uh, if you could save your full name and spell it for our court reporter, please. Yep. Uh, Lieutenant Tim Willis. That's W-I-L-L-I-S, the Old County Sheriff's Office. Thank you. If you please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide the court will be truthful, accurate, to the best of your ability, so help you God? I do, Your Honor. Thank you. And what information do you have that would lead the court to believe that a complaint and warrant should be issued against Ethan Robert Crumley? Your Honor, on Tuesday, November 30th, at, would you let me remove my mask on Tuesday? It's up to you, whatever you feel most comfortable with. Thank you, Your Honor. On November, on Tuesday, November 30th, at approximately 12.52 p.m., Sheriff's Office deputies were dispatched to Oxford High School, located at 745 North Oxford, Oxford Township, County of Oakland, State of Michigan, for the report of multiple gunshots being fired in or around the school. As deputies were responding to the scene, they witnessed numerous students and staff fleeing from the area. The first deputies on scene immediately um, deployed to the area of the high school, taking a 15-year-old student into custody. They are identified as Ethan Crumbly, 15-year-old um, Oxford Township resident. Um, preliminarily on the scene, the victims identified were a 16-year-old male who was deceased, um, a 14-year-old female who was deceased, a 17-year-old female who was deceased, a 17-year-old male who later was deceased um, at the hospital, a uh, 14-year-old male, um, gunshot wound, 17-year-old female, gunshot wound, 15-year-old male, gunshot wound, 17-year-old male, gunshot wound, 47-year-old female, gunshot wound, 14-year-old female, gunshot wound, and a 17-year-old female, gunshot wound. Um, as a result of this, Ethan Crumble was lodged at uh, uh, Children's Village on homicide and attempt homicide with the on duty referee approval. There was a weapon recovered from Ethan. It was a 9mm 6 sour automatic handgun. Um, the additional investigation revealed that school security video of the shooting incident perpetrated by Ethan. Uh, the school security video shows Ethan exit. A, a bathroom in the hallway and begins shooting at students, then proceeds to shoot students who are actively fleeing. He continues to shoot in a deliberate manner until apprehended by deputies. Two separate videos recovered from Ethan's um, cell phone, um, taken in a search warrant, depicted a video made by him the night before the incident, um, wherein he talked about shooting and killing students the next day at Oxford High School. Further, a journal was recovered from Ethan's backpack, also dealing, detailing his desire to shoot up the school to include uh, murdering students. A preliminary review of social media accounts indicate that Ethan Crumley had access to a firearm and he practiced with a six-hour handgun. Thank you. Uh, and I just would ask the, uh, the people, because these individuals weren't specifically identified by name, is that because they are minors? Does that need to be done as it relates to each particular victim? They are in the complaint warrant, but obviously not sworn to by the officer here. Judge, so they are listed in the complaint warrant, and at this stage, I'd ask Lieutenant Willis to, to name those individuals so that the swear to is consistent with our complaint warrant. Thank you. So if you can just go through each one, uh, one by one, the, it, for uh, starting with the uh, Obviously, well, actually with count one, which indicates the uh, terrorism causing death. Okay. Do you have a copy of the complaint warrant? I do, Your Honor. Okay. Knowingly, willfully, deliberately, and with premeditation, commit murder in the first degree. A violent felony the defendant knew or had reason to know was dangerous to human life when intending to intimidate, coerce a civilian population to the Oxford High School community and cause the deaths of Madison Baldwin, Tate, Tate Meyer, Hannah St. Julian, and Justin Schilling. Okay, thank you. And then you have four counts of homicide first degree. If you could just indicate those individuals that are deceased. Yes, ma'am. So the deceased are... Um, 
Tate Meyer, Hannah St. Juliana, Madison Baldwin, Justin Schilling. And then um, assault with intent to murder. There it looks like there's uh, seven victims. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. If it those are the people that receive gunshot wounds, if you just indicate those individuals to be consistent with the complaint. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Elijah Mueller. Hang on, just a minute. Let me make yes, sure got everybody. The first one I have for count six is Phoebe Auker. Is that, I'm looking at a complaint and warrant. Yes, right. I'm going off my notes. I apologize. Okay, just look at the complaint. If you can yes, no problem. Just look at the complaint and warrant. It's really, it should be really easy. See, it says count six. Yep. Oh, here yeah, I got it, Your Honor. I'm sorry. No problem. Didn't make an assault upon Phoebe Arthur with the intent to commit the crime of murder. Thank you. And um, go ahead, count seven. Go, yep. Didn't make an assault on, upon John Asudo, or Asudo, I apologize, with intent to commit crime of murder. And count um, eight. Did make an assault upon Mo Molly Darnell with the intent to commit the crime of murder. And count nine. Did make an assault upon, upon Riley Franz with the intent to commit the crime of murder. And count 10. Did make an assault upon Elijah Mueller with the intent to commit the crime of murder. And count 11. Did make an assault upon Kylie Osage with the intent to commit the crime of murder. And count 12. Did make an assault upon Aiden Watson with the intent to commit the crime of murder. Thank you. And it looks like the remainder of the counts, counts 13 uh, through 24, are possession of firearm and the commission of a felony that attached to all of the um, prior felony uh, counts. So, uh, anything further? No, Your Honor. Based upon the information that you provided to the court under oath, I do find probable cause to believe that a complaint and warrant should be issued. Uh, count one, terrorism causing death. Count two, three, four, and five, homicide murder in the first degree. Count six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Assault with intent to murder. And as it relates to each of those felony charges, count thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, and twenty four. Possession of a firearm and the commission of a felony to attach to each of those. Uh, above indicated felony charges. If you want to come forward as, and sign the complaint and warrant, is there anything further regarding the swear to Mr. Keast? Uh, not regarding swear to the judge, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, May I approach Of course. Understanding that we may be able to arraign uh, Mr. Crumley today. Uh, do we have? Uh, I'll ask my law clerk if we can get him from. Oh, here it looks like the Children's Village. We'll have him brought in. Mm -hmm. uh, if I may. Yes. Um, because the defendant is a juvenile under MCR 6.907. The prosecuting attorney must make a good faith effort for the juvenile's parents to be notified of the arraignment. I do believe that Miss Nadine Hink, who was initially appointed to this case, has made contact with the juvenile's parents. And I see on the Zoom screen indication that the defendant's parents are in fact attending this arraignment. Okay, 
That is correct. I do see, I, I'm not sure that that is them, but they are identified as Mr. and Mrs. Crumley parents, so I assume uh, that they are in the courtroom. Their video is not on. I don't know if their audio is on. I assume that it is. Uh, so, um, yes, thank you for bringing that to the court's attention and making a record of that. And, um, and it does, um, I can indicate that they actually, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Crumley, this is Judge Karniak. Um, and could you just, uh, you are the parents of uh, Ethan Crumley, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Thank you. Uh, if you could just state the full names, that would be great. Um, Jennifer Crumley. James Crumley. Thank you very much. Anything else from the people before we bring Mr. Ethan Crumley in? And start the no, Judge, I would, I would just like to speak as to bond, and I do have a motion to make at the appropriate time. Thank you. All right. So, <coughs> for arraignment purposes, calling the case of People versus Ethan Crumley, case number 216611. Uh, again, your appearances, Mr. Keast and Mr. Kosak. Thank you, Judge. Mark Keast on behalf of the people. Doc Kosak on behalf of Mr. Crumley, Your Honor. Uh, Judge, before we continue, uh, Full disclosure, uh, it was a, a last minute call to bring me in as far as just the arraignment purposes. I do not know Miss Hatton, and I have an immense amount of respect for her. Uh, may have had a chance to review his rights with him. I have not. Uh, I would appreciate it if the court would provide me with an opportunity to at least review his rights with him, go over his, uh, his uh, the entire situation, at least as far as we know before we conduct the arraignment, just uh, to make sure that we conduct everything in an appropriate manner. Absolutely. We'll put you in a breakout room uh, with Mr. Crumley, and just let us know whenever you're ready. And, Your Honor, uh, Nadine Hatton, um, I, that is correct, the information that you have been provided, and I apologize for interrupting. Um, I was the attorney assigned to um, Ethan Crumley on the juvenile matter. Um, if Mr. Kozak does not mind, I would like to join the breakout room with him. I had an opportunity to advise Ethan of his trial rights. I spent over an hour talking with Ethan, and so I want to make certain that he is comfortable and understands everything with Mr. Kozak. So if the court would allow me to um, join the breakout room, if Mr. Kozak does not have any objection, I would um, appreciate it. I think it's very appropriate under the circumstances, and we'll put the three of you in a breakout room. Just let us know when you're ready. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. recess and then we'll come back and we'll try to handle those cases as quickly as possible. Mrs. Scott afterwards. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Um, back on the record on Crumley. Mr. and Mrs. Crumley, can you hear court? Yes, we can. Thank you. I, I'm assuming that you would like to be put in breakout room with your son and his attorneys, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. yes, please. Okay, we will do that. We'll put you all together. Thank you. Thank you.
All rise. Please be seated. Okay, recalling Crumley 216611. And uh, Mr. Kozak, uh, your appearance, or uh, actually Mr. Keyes, first year appearance. Thank you, Mark Keyes, on behalf of people. Mr. Kozak. Once again, you're on Scott Kozak on behalf of Mr. Crumley. Ms. Hatton. Sorry. Yes, Your Honor. Nadine Hatton. I was um, formally appointed to Ms. Ethan uh, Crumley as his juvenile attorney. Thank you. And Mr. Crumley, just state your full name for us, please. Um, Ethan Robert Crumley. Thank you. Mr. Crumley, at any time you do not hear or understand myself or any of the parties to the proceeding, will you please let the court know? Yes. Mr. Cross, I can be ample time to talk to your client as well as with Ms. Hatton, along with Mr. Crumley's parents, to proceed with an arraignment. Yes, Your Honor, and I appreciate Ms. Hatton's presence as well as uh, Mr. Crumley's parents. I appreciate the court's time in allowing us to get acquainted. Uh, Mr. Crumley was present for the swear to. He does not. Uh, for purposes of arraignment, if the court wants to proceed, I can at this point in time. Yes, okay, great. So then I'm going to, uh, Mr. Crumley, I'm going to uh, advise you of your rights. Uh, and the charge against you, again, if at any time you do not hear or understand anything, will you please let the court know? Yes. You do have a right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Do you understand that right, sir? Yes, I do. All right. Count one does indicate that you did that uh, on or about November 30th, 2021. Ethan Robert Crumley did knowingly, willfully, deliberately, and with premeditation commit murder first degree, a violent a, a felony that the defendant knew or had reason to know was dangerous to human life while intending to intimidate or coerce the civilian pop population to wit the Oxford High School community and cause the death of Madison Baldwin, Tate Meyer, Hannah St. Juliana, and Justin Schilling, contrary to MCL 750.543F. This is a felony punishable by life without parole or a minimum of 25 to 40 years and a maximum sentence of at least 60 years with reimbursements for government ex expenses incurred for this violation. This is otherwise known as terrorism causing death. Count two indicates that on that same date time, November 30th, 2021, Ethan Robert Crumley did deliberately with the intent to kill and with premeditation kill murder one Madison Baldwin, contrary to MCL 750.316. This is a felony like, that is punishable by life without parole or a minimum sentence of 25 to 40 years and a maximum sentence of at least 60 years. This is otherwise known as homicide or murder first degree premeditated being a juvenile defendant. Count three alleges that on November 30th, 2021, Ethan Robert Crumley deliberately with the intent to kill with and with premeditation, kill and murder one Tate Meyer, contrary to MCL 750.316. This is a felony punishable by life without parole or a minimum sentence of 25 to 40 years and a maximum sentence of at least 60 years, also known as homicide murder first degree premeditated by a juvenile defendant. Count four alleges that on November 30th, 2021, and again, all of these, I'm sorry, are in the Ox in Township of Oxford. I, and I did indicate that. I will continue to indicate that. That Ethan Robert Crumley did deliberately with the intent to kill and with premeditation kill and murder one Hannah St. Juliana, contrary to CL 750.316, felony, life without parole, for a minimum sentence of 25 to 40 years, and a maximum sentence of uh, at least 60 years, and this is in violation of MCL 750, again, point three one six. This homicide murder first degree premeditated by a juvenile defendant. Count 5 alleges that on November 30th, Ethan Robert Crumley did in the township of Oxford, deliberately with the intent to kill and with premeditation, kill and murder Justin Schilling, contrary to MCL 750.316, a felony without parole or a minimum sentence of 25, 40 years, and a maximum sentence of at least 60 years. This is called homicide, murder, first degree, premeditated by a juvenile defendant. Count 6 alleges that on November 30th, 2021, Ethan Robert Crumley did in Oxford Township 
make an assault on Phoebe Author with intent to commit the crime of murder, contrary to MCL 750.83. This is a felony, punishable by up to life for any number of years, DNA to be taken upon arrest. A consecutive sentence may be imposed under MCL 750.506A if the assault was committed in a place of confinement. This is also known as assault with intent to murder. Count 7 indicates that on November 30th, 2021, Ethan Rob Crumley, while in the township of Oxford, did assault, make an assault with, uh, upon John uh, Asciutto with intent to commit the crime of murder, contrary to MCL 750.83. This is a felony punishable by life for any number of years, DNA to be taken upon arrest. This is also known as assault with intent uh, to commit murder. Count 8 indicates that on November 30th, 2021, Ethan Robert Crumley did in Oxford Township make an assault upon Molly Darnell with the intent to commit the crime of murder, contrary to MCL 750.83. This is a felony punishable by life for any number of years, and DNA to be taken upon arrest, also known as assault with intent to murder. Count 9 alleges that on November 30th, 2021, Ethan Robert Crumley, while in the township of Oxford, did make an assault upon Riley Franz with intent to commit the crime of murder, contrary to MCL 750.83. This is a felony, punishable by up to life or any number of years, DNA to be taken upon arrest. It's called assault with intent to murder. Count 10 alleges that on November 30th, 2021, Ethan Robert Crumley, while in Oxford Township, did make an assault upon Elijah Mueller with intent to commit the crime of murder, contrary to MCL 750.83, a felony, punishable while life for any number of years, DNA to be taken upon arrest. Also, again, assault with intent to murder. Count 11 alleges that on November 30th, 2021, Ethan Robert Crumley, while in Oxford Township, did make an assault upon Kyle Assage with the intent to commit the crime of murder, contrary to MCL 750.83. This is a felony, punishable by life or any number of years. DNA to be taken upon arrest. Count 12 indicates that on November 30th, 2021, Ethan Robert Crumley, while in Oxford Township, did make an assault upon Aiden Watson with intent to commit the crime of murder, contrary to MCL 750.83, a felony punishable by life for any number of years, and DNA to be taken upon arrest. This is also called assault with intent to murder. There are now 12 counts of possession of a firearm in the commission of uh, a felony. Counts 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. They do allege that on November 30th, 2021, in Oxford Township, Ethan Robert Crumley did carry or have in possession a firearm to wit a pistol at the time he committed or attempted to commit a felony, to wit terrorism causing death, um, also murder in the first degree uh, for count 14, murder in the first degree for count 15, murder in the first degree for count 16, murder in the first degree for count 17, assault with intent to commit murder for count 18, assault with intent to commit murder for count 19, Assault with intent to commit murder for count 20. Assault with intent to commit murder for count 21. Assault with intent to commit murder for count 22. Assault with intent to commit murder, count 23. And assault with intent to commit murder, count 24. This is contrary to the laws of the state, specifically MCL 750.227B. This is a felony punishable up to two years consecutively, consecutively with and preceding any term of imprisonment imposed for the felony or attempt felony of conviction. This uh, is called possession of a firearm in the commission of a felony. Sir, do you understand all the charges against you? 
Yes, I do. Again, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Do you understand your right to remain silent? Yes. You also have, of course, your right to an attorney, and Mr. Kozak and, uh, and Ms. Hatton have with you, and that right will continue uh, throughout uh, all uh, legal proceedings. Um, and as it relates to anything further, we do need to set a bond. Uh, as it relates to bond, uh, I will first let the... Uh, actually, we do have pretrial services here to make a recommendation as to bond, and then we will let each attorney speak uh, as it relates to that. So if the individual from pretrial services can come forward, state her full name and spell it for our court reporter. Darla Finley, pretrial yeah. services. I'm sorry, Judge. Just before we do that, I just want to make sure it's clear that uh, my client is standing mute. We're asking the court to enter not oh, guilty. Oh, I'm plea. sorry. Yes. I will enter a plea of not guilty on his behalf, and we will set this for bond. Thank you, Mr. Kozak. Darla Finley, pretrial services, D-A-R-L-A-F-I-N-L-E-Y. The defendant was unable to be interviewed due to his location at the Children's Village. Therefore, we have limited information. Um, we do know that he's 15 years old, resident of Oxford. He's a sophomore at Oxford High School. He has no prior juvenile record, no noted police contacts in Clemis. Given the serious nature of matter, um, there's no conditions or combinations of conditions which will assure the defendant's appearance in court or safety to the community at large. Therefore, we recommend that bond be, be denied. Thank you from pretrial services. Mr. Keast, anything you'd like to say? I would, Judge, thank you. Because the defendant is a juvenile charged as an adult, this court must look at Michigan Court Rule 6.909, subparagraph 2. That court rule states that regarding detention without bail, if the proof is evident or if the presumption is great, that the juvenile committed the offense, the magistrate or the court may deny bail, subparagraph A, to a juvenile charged with first degree murder. Judge, in this case, I am asking this court to deny bail, as pretrial supervision has indicated. As an um, offer of proof, I think it's appropriate for this court to have a brief chronology of what happened on November the 30th, 2021. As uh, you heard during the square two, Judge, Oxford High School is equipped with surveillance uh, video. We've had the opportunity to review that surveillance video just this morning. And what's depicted on that video, it, honestly, Judge, I don't have the words to describe how horrific that was that happened on November the 30th. It depicted just before 12.51 p.m., this defendant entering a bathroom with a backpack. A minute or two later, he exited the same bathroom without the backpack, but with a gun in hand. At that point, he methodically and deliberately walked on the hallway, aiming the firearm at students, and firing. Right outside the bathroom, he began firing, Judge. After children started running away from the defendant, he continued down the hallway, again at a deliberate and methodical pace, pointing and aiming inside classrooms and at students who hadn't had the opportunity to escape. This continued on for four or approximately five minutes. The defendant went to another bathroom. As deputies arrived, he set the firearm down and he surrendered. Judge, a preliminary review of the defendant's social media accounts, his cell phone, as well as other document, document evidence recovered on scene show that this defendant planned the shooting. He deliberately brought the handgun that day with the intent to murder as many students as he could. Judge, I believe no bond is appropriate. And again, like I stated, at the appropriate time, I'd like to make a motion to transfer this defendant from Children's Village to the Oakland County Jail. Thank you. Mr. Kosak? Your Honor, understanding the, uh, the extreme nature of this case and understanding the, the circumstances at hand, uh, and, and having spoken to Mr. Crumley as well as his parents, uh, I'm going to leave the, uh, the, bond, the setting of the bond and the, the discretion of the court. Thank you. Anything further for Ms. Hatton? Nothing further, Your Honor. I'm leaving the discretion of the court. Thank you. And I'm assuming you don't want your client to speak. That's correct, Your Honor, on both Mr. Kozak and my behalf. Thank you. Um, I do believe, based upon all the information that's been provided to date, that a no bond, a denial of bond, is appropriate pursuant to a court rule, and uh, I will order no bond on this case. Of, of course, your client does have a right to a preliminary exam in the statutory 21 time period, day time period, as well as a probable cause conference. I don't know if the court, the court should have something, or have we set something, do we know? 
Oh, it's on the front of the file? Okay. All right. A probable cause conference will be set on December 13th at 1.15 in front of myself and then an exam the following week on December 20th at 1.15 again in front of myself. Anything further from the people or the defense? Thank you, Judge. I, I do have a motion for the court. The defendant is currently housed in Children's Village, if, if I may. Yes. Thank you, Judge. Under the same rule, MCR 6.909, subparagraph B, regarding place of confinement. Subparagraph 2. On motion of a prosecutor attorney or superintendent of a juvenile facility in which the juvenile is detained, the magistrate or court may order the juvenile confined in a jail or similar facility designed and used to incarcerate adult prisoners upon a showing that the juvenile's habits or conduct are considered a menace to other juveniles. Judge, in this case, I can't think of a more appropriate um, set of circumstances for a transfer from Oakland County Children's Village to the Oakland County Jail. Now, this court must also look at the statute, and that's MCL 764.278. I spoke with Lieutenant Tim Willis, who is the officer in charge, into the square two this afternoon. He has confirmed that the Oakland County Jail can house this defendant in the location out of sight and sound from adults. And that's the standard in the statute, Judge. Um, the Oakland County Jail is better equipped to handle this situation. They have done so in the past. They have done so in conformance with the statute. It is a more secure location. And I would ask that this court find that this defendant's conduct is a menace to juveniles by evidence of the simple fact that he targeted juveniles in this offense. Count one is a charge of terrorism uh, via murder, Judge, and the evidence that will come out of the preliminary examination and the subsequent trial will show that this was a planned event, it was methodical in its operation, and it was done so to terrorize, intimidate others in the community, Judge. I do believe the Oakland County Jail is the appropriate location to house this defendant. Thank you. Thank you. As it relates to that issue, Mr. Kosak and Ms. Hatton. Thank you, Your Honor. All due respect to Mr. Keese, Your Honor. Uh, I, and I, I want to remind the court, and I know the court doesn't need reminding, that these are allegations. He has not been found guilty of these, uh, of these issues or uh, these charges as of yet. And I'm asking the court to, well, I'm objecting to the, the transfer at this point in time. I think the, uh, the Children's Village is more than capable of monitoring him and maintain the safety of the other residents of that facility. Uh, I think at this point, Judge, if the court's going to consider the motion, I would ask the court to perhaps hold the ruling in abeyance until after the preliminary examination, at which point the court will have had a chance to have taken sworn and heard sworn testimony regarding these incidents. Regarding the issue itself regarding, regarding, the, regarding the fact that he shouldn't be moved? Regarding... Regarding the incidents itself, the incidents itself, Your Honor, and because I, be, I believe that's what prosecution is using as a reason for the transfer in and of itself. That that's evidence of the, the need to transfer. Thank you. This happening. Your Honor, just, just very briefly, this court has already found that the proof is evident under 6.909, and I know this is a preliminary showing. Obviously, defense has not had the opportunity to review discovery. Neither has this court. However. It is alleged in these 24 counts that this defendant didn't commit first-degree murder upon anybody, but he targeted other juveniles. And I believe that 6.909 uh, subparagraph B is written specifically for a situation such as this. The Oakland County Jail is the appropriate location for this individual judge. It is, like I said, well-equipped for this. They have the ability to keep this defendant separate from both sight and sound of other adults. Um, this is appropriate in these cir circumstances, Judge. Ms. Hatton, anything further? I concur in Mr. Kozak's argument. Um, I will advise the court that as Mr. Um, Ethan Crumley's uh, juvenile attorney, I did have an opportunity to speak again with Mr. Crum Ethan Crumley at the juvenile facility, Children's Village, as well as the individuals who are um, supervising Mr. Crumley, um, Ethan Crumley at the Women's Village. It's been reported to me, Your Honor, as an officer of the court, that Ethan has been cooperative. He is on suicide prevention there at Children's Village. He's not in general population. He's secluded and he's receiving one-on-one -on -one, um, supervision. 
I would ask the court, based on that information, and that he is cloaked in the veil of innocence unless proven guilty, that he remain at Children Village until after the preliminary examination. Given that Children's Village is suitable and able to uh, maintain the safety of other um, children at Children's Village, I believe it is appropriate at this time that Ethan remain at his current placement with current um, conditions and supervisions in place until the preliminary um, exam, which is in a matter of days, December 20th, 2021, as this court has said. Thank you. I'm going to ask to hear from Lieutenant Willis regarding safety issues and what, what is considered. If you want to come up to the podium, Lieutenant, and state your full name for us, please. Lieutenant Tim Willis. And Lieutenant Willis, um, I had heard from uh, Mr. Keese that you thought it was appropriate for him to be moved to uh, the adult facility. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Could you explain to me why you feel that way? Uh, the, this, well, I mean, besides the obvious of, of what uh, is alleged to occur. Right. So obviously, I agree with Mr. East about the the, the incidents I witnessed for, um, via the video and all that stuff, but also the. The sheriff's office in the past has housed several juveniles. Um, I, I actually worked in that jail and, and know for a fact that how um, I just have all the confidence in the world in, in my team, the, the, the sheriff deputies of the jail, to um, secure him and keep him um, completely sequestered. Um, so how does that work? Explain what would happen to him and how he would, what the yeah, placement would be. Yes, Your Honor. We have several jail cells in and around, um, but uh, typically they we have a, where he would go, where he would be placed, is the, our a clinic area, and it's completely secluded off from the rest of, it's, it's the only thing, there's a glass front door, but everything else is, is bricked in. So it's completely private, completely back and away, and a deputy monitors um, him. So, so we'd have no contact whatsoever with any adult inmates, is that, that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. Okay, and he would be, in there in that facility by himself correct there would be no again the only adults he would hear would be the deputies working there but no, right. no inmates thank not you see them, hear them. thank you yes sir um under the circumstances and based upon the nature of this offense uh still of course understanding that the defendant has a right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt i'm going to certainly err on the side of caution i think it is within the court rules to to do so and I would agree with uh, Mr. Keese. This is the perfect example of a case that should be done to protect other juveniles. So I will have him move to that facility. As has been indicated, that he um, will be in isolation and not will be in, will not be in contact with any other adult inmates, but only that of sheriff studies. Anything further? Not from the people, Judge. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the only uh, matter would be making sure that he has counsel at the date of the probable cause conference. I'm not sure if the court has paperwork already prepared on his behalf, but he will need uh, court appointed counsel at that point. So I'm not sure who the, um, that is obviously is done by circuit court. Do we know what's going on in that regard? He will just need to fill out the attorney request, Judge, and oh. they will get that. Okay. So, all right. Mr. Crumley? We want to make sure that you have counsel at each and every future court date. So we're going to get, make sure you have that paperwork today to fill out, so that you can make, so that you will have an attorney present at your probable cause conference, your preliminary exam, and all future proceedings. Do you have any questions about filling out that court-appointed attorney form? No, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Kozak. Okay. If there's nothing further. We are in recess. Thank you.